Denifrips, Denifrips, Denifrips. What do I think about that brand? Well, there's the DAX, and let's be honest, that's what Denifrips have built their reputation on. There's the Aries 2. That's the kind of product that I believe only comes around every few years. It generally moved the needle on what I thought was possible from a DAC below a thousand pounds. Okay, so there's DACs that will compete with it when it comes to clarity, even a couple that perhaps will exceed it. But if you value a natural tonality and a 3D immersive sound feel like I do, there's nothing that I've come across that will touch it for the price. Then there's the Pontus 2, which ups the game in terms of build quality as well as sound quality. If you've got a well-chosen pair of speakers and amplifiers in the two to three thousand pounds range, it's well worth the additional investment. The Pontus 2 will set you back the best part of two thousand pounds. Let me let you into a little secret. The Venus 2, which is the next model up in the range, that's in for review here at the moment. And a little bit of a spoiler alert, that's no slouch either. But Denifrips don't just make DACs, they make amplifiers as well. Now, my experience with their amplifiers isn't quite so positive. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that they make bad amplifiers. I'm not saying that at all. Back in February 2022, I reviewed the Hades preamp and the matching Thalo power amplifier, a fully balanced design, yours for the best part of three and a half thousand pounds. The clarity was superb, but that 3D immersive sound feel that the DACs are known for, let's be honest, the amplifiers didn't have that. It also lacked a little bit of mid-bass punch. That's what gets your toes tapping. It gave the Hades Thalo a dry, analytical, I almost said sterile, but that would be harsh. Let's go with analytical. Definitely had that kind of tonal characteristic. It literally had me scratching my head. I couldn't fathom why the DAX had such a different tonal characteristic to the amplifiers. It was almost like they came from two different brands. And after the review, there were a few reasons why I thought did I really give those amplifiers a fair crack of the whip? So let's go through those reasons. Well, the first I've already pretty much explained. It wasn't the sound that I was expecting from Denifrips. As for the second, well, you have to lift the lid on the components and take a look at the design itself. Whether you're looking at the Hades preamplifier or the Thalo power amplifier, you'll see whole banks of capacitors. And if there's one component that can take its time to burn in, it's a capacitor. The more you have of them, the likelihood is the longer it will take. And the third reason, well, that's down to you guys. There's a few of you out there that actually own Denifrips amplifiers. A couple of people reached out to me after the review and they said, Taron, we've run these amplifiers for a number of months and we have noticed that the sound does change a little bit. Perhaps you'll consider re-evaluating them further down the line after they've had more use. I reached out to Alvin at Vinchine Audio, that's the global distributor for Denifrips, and he agreed that I could hang on to them. So for the last six months or so, they've been in my son's playroom. And that works quite well because they get daily use playing whatever he wants to play through them, Minecraft games and whatever videos or flavor of the month for an eight-year-old. I think it was Penguins of Madagascar and uh, Kung Fu Panda. And I don't get to do any critical listening. So I can't condition myself to the sound of the system until I put them back into my main system, which I did a few weeks ago. So the question remains, was I right or was I wrong? Shall I be diplomatic or shall I be blunt? Well, let's go the direct route. No, the fundamental characteristics of this amplifier remain unchanged, although I can understand why some people would consider that to be the case. The traits that I described earlier, they're still true, just slightly less obvious. The soundstage does open up a little bit and that dry analytical nature, it's still there, just not quite so prominent. The best analogy I can come up with is this. When you're trying on new shoes, you know immediately what's a good fit or a bad fit. An uncomfortable pair of shoes is still going to be uncomfortable six months later, just slightly less so. Whereas a comfortable pair of shoes, well, you're hardly going to notice that you're wearing them. This amplifier, I think, will continue to polarize opinion. You've just got to decide whether it's a good or a bad fit for you. Along with the Venus, Denifrips also sent me the Hestia, their entry-level preamplifier. Switching that with the Hades, threw up some interesting results. So let's get stuck into that. The Denfrips Hestia preamplifier retails for 1,449 Singaporean dollars, sold direct by global distributor Vinchine Audio. That's about 1,000 US dollars and the equivalent in euros. It makes it about 30% cheaper than the Hades preamp, which is the next model up in the range. 
Like most Denifritz products, the Hestia is about three quarters the width of a full rack unit, measuring 320 millimeters wide or 12.6 inches. It shares the Hades impressive billet aluminum casework. The shallower depth is the only real indication that you've purchased a junior model, other than the label of course. Otherwise, the fascia is identical with a knob to mute the device and toggle between three inputs. The other to adjust 60 steps of microprocessor controlled relay based attenuation. Oh yes, it comes with the same bulletproof solid aluminium remote control as well. You won't find anything to distinguish it from the Hades on the rear either. This is a truly fully balanced preamp with two XLR inputs and one single ended RCA. Likewise, you get to choose between XLR and RCA on the output to connect to a power amplifier or powered speakers. Under the cover and yet again you'll see that the Hestia and the Hades are much more similar than they are different. What you get with the Hades is a beefed up ATVA O-ring transformer. You might quite understandably ask from an engineering perspective, why do you need a bigger transformer on a pre-amplifier? And the answer is that some designers believe that the bigger transformer which delivers lower impedance has a beneficial effect on sound quality. Other enhancements on the Hades include an improved linear power supply to lower noise and high precision match through hole resistors to tighter tolerance, again in the pursuit of greater quality. Most of my listening was done switching between the Hestia and the Hades preamplifier with the Denifrips Thalo power amplifier. I did try different power amplifiers for the sake of completeness, which I'll talk about in the next section, how you'd put together a system around either of these pre-amplifiers and what the considerations would be. But I think the vast majority of people are likely to choose the matching Denifrips power amplifier, whether it's the Thalo or one of the others in the range. And it was the best fit sonically as well. So that's what my comments relate to here. Upstream was the Denifrips Pontus DAC fed by my Aurelic Aries Mini streamer. And downstream, most of the listening was done with my Proact Response 1SC speakers to highlight the maximum difference between these two preamps, although I did try some other speakers as well. In that system, which is pretty revealing, let's be honest, it was quite noticeable how different these two preamps performed. Given the relatively modest differences in design, there was a distinct difference in tonality and clarity. So let's break that down. Possibly the standout trait of the Hades Thalo combination is how clean the sound is. And what I mean by that is, even if you've got half a dozen instruments playing at the same time in a busy mix, you can easily make out and follow each instrument with no bleed through from one to another. Not only that, you can make out the beginning and the end of each note. It really is an exceptional trait of that particular combination. Switch in the Hestia and it's good, very good, but no longer exceptional. It's more akin to what you get from a decent 3,000 pound integrated amplifier. Now it just so happens that I have one of those on tap. The Hegel H190 won't match the Hades Thalo combination when it comes to clarity. It's more akin to what you get when you substitute in the Hestia, but it has other virtues, a wider soundstage, more bass presence, and a more natural tonality. As for tonality, well, that's where things get really interesting between these two. The Hades takes a very deliberate step into the cool analytical camp. As for the Hestia, well that more or less kind of peaks behind the curtain. What I'm trying to say is, if you're looking for the more tonally balanced out of these two amplifiers, even though both of them still sit on the dry analytical side, it's the junior sibling that gets the nod. Hmm. This section's important for me to get right. I don't think either of these two pre-amplifiers are simple plug and play. That doesn't mean that they're not the right solution for you. One of them might be the ideal solution for you. It just depends what you want and need from your system. So I want to distill down what kind of systems I think they'll work in. The Hestia makes for the easier universal recommendation. It has a more neutral tonal balance, which means that it should work well in a wider range of price appropriate systems. Now you'll notice that I chose my words very carefully. I said the more neutral tonal balance, and that's in comparison to the Hades. It'll still impart that slightly analytical nature when inserted in your system, but that might be exactly what you need. You might have a system that's overly rich, lacks a little bit of fidelity, has a little bit of lumpiness in the bass, and the Hestia might be just the ticket in terms of tightening and cleaning things up. 
The other thing I mentioned was price appropriate components and I think that's important too. When I switched out my Proax for the Q Acoustic Concept 30s at retail here in the UK for £900, the difference between the Hestia and the Hades preamps wasn't that noticeable at all. The other instance where I see the Hestia being used is where you prefer to have or need to have a balanced XLR connection. For example, with studio monitors or active speakers, some of those speakers only have an XLR balance connection. In any case, even if they have an RCA connection, you don't want to be running long runs of RCA. The chance of that cable picking up noise is significant. That problem should be eradicated with a balanced XLR connection. The Hestia is not just a preamp with a balanced connection. It's got a fully balanced circuit inside as well. In fact, I can't think of another fully balanced preamp for around £1,000 from an established hi-fi brand. Feed it with a fully balanced DAC, and there's plenty of them in the sub £1,000 category from the likes of SMSL topping. Heck, even the Denifrips Aries 2 is fully balanced, and you have a fully balanced signal running from your DAC through your preamp right to your power amp or powered speakers and all the noise rejection properties and benefits that that brings. What about the Hades? Well, that ups the stakes quite a bit in terms of clarity as well as coloration very much a preamplifier for the analytical audiophile or someone who's trying to balance their system with that characteristic. A little word of caution before I move on. Matching preamplifiers and power amplifiers from different brands can be problematic. I tried both of these Denfrips preamplifiers with my exposure monoblocks. That didn't work. I also tried them with the Burson power amplifiers that I've got in for review. That didn't work either. Now, before you start pointing fingers and saying, well, that's the Denfrips preamps fault, well, that isn't the case. I also swapped things around and tried my preamplifiers with those power amplifiers, and they were equally fruitless. Even if on paper you match the gains and the impedances and they should work, quite often the synergy between one brand of preamplifier and another brand of power amplifier doesn't work. You might get lucky sometimes, but more often than not, you won't. The Denifrip Hestia preamp is superbly built. It will allow signal to pass through it whilst preserving very good levels of detail. Even if it does impart a sheen, that's a little diagnostic as opposed to musical. It's that coloration as well as its limitations in terms of scale and dynamics, which means it misses out on higher accolades. But if you're looking for a balanced preamplifier, I can't think of an alternative that's as good for around this price. The Denifrip Hestia comfortably gets a recommended from this channel. So synergy was a big factor in this review. And what I'd like you to do is to share in the comments section your experiences, good and bad, with synergy, whether it's speakers with amplifiers, power amplifiers with preamplifiers, phono stages with turntables, whatever. I think it will make a very good discussion piece in the comment section below. All that remains for me to say is if you like this video, if you like what I'm doing with this channel and you haven't done so already, please do all that social media stuff. Check me out on Patreon for the consultancy services and the ABA club and the bonus content that I offer. For today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.